This subject comes up in the comments whenever I make anything that features any type of pocket screw joinery. Some people just insist that this type of joinery has no place in a self-respecting woodworker's shop, like nails, which is another subject for another time. Some people have just been conditioned to believe that the very existence of a mechanical fastener is a sign of inferior work. And if that fastener is angled and driven into a pocket, it somehow becomes doubly bad. They mock them or they condemn them outright as if all applications of pocket screws were the same. Using them to build cabinets is just as bad as using them to build Windsor chairs. Not only do I disagree with this notion, I think it hurts our craft. Because there absolutely are times when pocket screw joinery may not only be perfectly acceptable, but perhaps even the best form of joinery for the task. Now, how can I say that about a technology that was unknown to the great masters of the past? Because pocket screws were not unknown to the great masters of the past. This type of joinery is not a modern invention for cheap mass-produced furniture. People have been driving screws at angles since the screw was invented, and it didn't take long before they figured out that you could use a gouge to carve a pocket so the head would be set below the surface. Pocket screw joinery is found in furniture made more than a century ago, not only proving the old timers found it acceptable, but showing that when used properly, this type of joinery can last for generations. The key is to use it properly. Just as I wouldn't use regular miter joints to fasten legs to a table, I wouldn't use pocket screws where a mortise and tenon would be more appropriate. But I guarantee that a kitchen cabinet assembled with pocket screws will last just as long as one assembled with rabbits or dados because kitchen cabinets are attached to kitchen walls. They aren't subject to the same forces that a table or chair would be. Just as not every house is built with mortises and tenons, not every piece of casework must be made with dados. But I know some of you are saying, what's wrong with overbuilding? Why shouldn't I use the best form of joinery possible whether the project needs the strength or not? Maybe you should. But don't pretend pocket screw joinery is not strong enough for certain projects. And don't assume that pocket screws are never among the best forms of joinery for the task at hand. For example, pocket screws are an excellent choice when you must allow for wood movement. The shakers use them to attach solid wood tabletops. By making the hole in the pocket side of the joint oversized, the shaft of the screw could flex and move as the swelling of the wood required. We recently used pocket screws to join a desktop in an L shape, again, to allow for cross-grain wood movement. Pocket screws come in very handy in a lot of awkward situations, too. Here we're building some frames for dust panels that'll be mounted above a drawer in a cabinet. The unique design of the cabinet's carcass necessitated notches in the corners of these panels. Here, a pocket screw was the best joinery solution, in my opinion, especially considering that the strength of the assembly came from a panel that would later be set within the frame. Pocket screws have gotten us out of a lot of jams in this workshop over the years. They've made a lot of things much easier. Here we mounted an angle support rail to a corner desk. This also created mounting blocks for attaching the desktop. Pocket screws not only made this assembly fast and sturdy, but it also made it possible to disassemble the desk if we need to into separate components when the time comes to move it. The ability to take a project apart is a major benefit of pocket screw joinery. Shop projects in particular are always changing as you rearrange and alter your shop's layout. Many times I have wished to modify a cabinet or a fixture, and with pocket screws, this is a relatively simple process. The same is true of modular organization systems in the house, like in your closet or your basement, pantries, other storage areas. The ability to modify utilitarian projects is an undeniable benefit of pocket screw joinery. Pocket screws may also be used as clamping devices, even when you wish for the greater mechanical strength of something like a dado. Assembling this chest of drawers required many more large clamps than the average workshop has but strategically placed pocket screws held it together while the glue dried without revealing their locations in the finished project. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, pocket screw joinery opens up the craft to millions of woodworkers who simply do not have the tools or the skills or the shops for more traditional forms of joinery. Nobody is suggesting that they use them for everything. There are proper applications and there are improper ones. 
but don't paint with such a broad brush that because you wouldn't use it in one situation, no one should use it in any situation. If someone can build a sturdy cabinet on their back porch that will serve its purpose just as well as your dadoed cabinet that you built in your nice workshop, who are you to tell them that their project is less legitimate because they have screws driven at an angle? Results are what matter, and if you're using them properly in the right situations, pocket screw joinery can certainly produce quality results. Just ask the shakers. See you next time. Castle doesn't just make pocket hole jigs, they make pocket hole joinery machines. The internal router cuts a cleaner pocket than any drill bit can, with no tear out and a crisp exit. The steeper angle centers the screw for a stronger joint and reduces component drift during assembly. Castle machines are top quality, built to last and flat out perform. Visit their website at the link below and see the difference for yourself. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.